Okay, people of God, just want to uh, share some things. Uh, hopefully, it encourage you in the Lord, and um, definitely, you know, want to encourage you in the Lord to continue to stay faithful to Jesus Christ. Uh, no matter what the world is saying, trying to push, no matter what the media is saying and trying to get people uh, to focus on the cares of this world. It is it, something I would say this. It is a dangerous time to be an unbeliever, to be an unbeliever. I mean, you to not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ in this season during this year alone, uh, you are, I mean, basically playing that whole Russian roulette game. It's like you might as well, you got a better chance of going through the jungle uh, with meat wrapped around your waist and, and hoping that you make it out alive uh, because th that's what it's like in, in this time. And for somebody to see all these things going on, all these reports happening, all this stuff taking place and still not turn to Jesus Christ in this hour, what else do you need? I mean, what else do you really need? There's there's really no no excuse and no reason uh, other than you just don't care about your soul. You don't care about eternity. You just hooked into, you know, everything. You're putting your faith and your trust in mankind. And as a matter of fact, putting your faith and trust in mankind alone, look where it's gotten the nation. Look where it's gotten the world. Look at all the craziness, the chaos, the confusion, the hypocrisy, the inconsistency, the the false reports, the lying and deception that's taking place. And you want to keep your faith and your trust in mankind rather than Jesus Christ. Uh, it, it's really, that's really baffling, you know. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to uh, definitely share that, you know, first and foremost, because I got the thumbs down click that seems to pop up on the videos, which I appreciate you watching the videos. Uh, just so you can click thumbs down because it just shows me that something is said that hits, you know, to your heart that you don't want to let go of or you don't want to deal with or you don't want to acknowledge the truth. And that's your opinion. That's your view. I'm going to stay with the word of God. That's why this channel is called. If it's in the word, it's in the word. So to the thumbs down click, uh, you're going to be held responsible for what you know. You'll never be able to say you know, before Jesus Christ that I didn't know. Nobody ever told me. Nobody ever explained the word of God to me. Nobody ever said anything because you know, on this channel, I make sure to to, uh, uh, to share and express the word of God. Uh, but because you got the, the thumbs down, you know, you're part of the thumbs down click. It really doesn't matter what anybody says to you. You just want to thumbs down because something is exalting Jesus Christ and the word of God is confronting something in your life. So, uh, that's what this word is going to do as well. So I'm just letting you know. But anyway, I want to uh, touch on some things. Some of you just because I was just pondering over some things. Uh, what I've noticed these past couple of of weeks, uh, the past couple of months, um, and uh, some of you may have already thought about this stuff, or you know, have uh, had the same thoughts or whatever. But I find it very interesting that within the last two months, I would say you have not seen. Any videos of white officers shooting black men? You haven't seen them. In the last two months, during election time, okay, you really haven't seen them. Now, all throughout the year, I'll say, started what, back in March, uh, March, April, that's when you started seeing the, 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 the shootings and, and the, the, the interaction between cops and African-American men. And it was from, from, I'll say, it started in April, you could not turn your your channel uh, without seeing another inaction popping up, then another YouTube video popping up, then another inaction popping up. And so the media continually showed these things and it created civil unrest in our nation. But all of a sudden, come November and December, you don't see it anymore. Now you start seeing people that this is this was strategic. And this has been this happened, you know, it's, it's happened before. It happened four years ago, you know, when uh, 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 President Trump was running. And this video is not going to be about, you know, the, uh, the elections and all that stuff. But it's just something for you to pay attention to. And it's something that I've tried to express before that this is an agenda. This is something that the media 
uh, and, and people in power with rich and fame, which is what I expressed in the last video by James chapter five. I believe it was James chapter five talking about the rich, you know, and those that walk around in great strength and their wealth and everything, how it's going to be uh, uh, like judgment uh, towards them, that their wealth and their riches is going to testify against them. Uh, because of all the crookedness and wickedness that's taking place. And people of God understand that the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. And uh, people want to be in power. They want to remain in power. So they're willing to sacrifice lives, create civil unrest and anything. Or create a narrative that is going to push their agenda. And we see within the last two months. Now you may have seen some incidents. I believe there was an incident with a young teenage uh, 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 black male that was... Uh, uh, the police officers were trying to pull him over and he ignored the police officers. He ignored the stop signs, the stop lights. So he runs to his father's and mother's porch and is crying out, daddy, daddy, daddy. And the police officers apprehended him. I mean, physically held him down because when he got out the car, after running the lights, after refusing to stop at the police command, he, he pulled up in his driveway. The police officers get out the car with their guns drawn, saying, listen, keep your hands up. Don't move. So he takes off running anyway. Three times, just completely not complying toward the police officers and stuff. And, of, of course, Good Morning America gets on there with with, with uh, Gwen, and, and she's talking about, oh, the black people are just so afraid of police officers. And No, no. Again, you have another black male refusing to comply with police officers, authority figures, instructions and because he did now he gets to play the victim card so that's the kind of, like the closest incident that you see or oh, that's the closest one that i've seen but anyway i've noticed that and then have you noticed have you heard of any uh defunding police chants coming out within the last two months i think recently they just you know cut the minneapolis or the uh yeah i believe it's minneapolis police department eight million dollars uh, but you really haven't heard anything about defund the police across this nation because it was election time. All right. Plus, it's Christmas time and police officers and toys for tots and all this stuff. Winter coats for kids. Police officers, uh, a lot of times are the ones involved in that. You don't hear, you, you know, cussing about the churches, talking about blank Jesus and all this other stuff. You don't hear that. Why? Because people are dependent on churches now. And it is something how people's attitudes change when they are in need of something. And now you got people, the multitudes of people in the community running to the church, asking the church for Thanksgiving help, asking the church for, for Christmas help and everything. But yeah, when January 2021 comes around, February and March, watch how they turn it back on the, on the, on the, on the church again. And you start seeing the same consistent pattern and people are falling for the bait every time. So when we see things like this, people, that's why I say, Jones, don't fall for the okie doke because of what the media is pushing, because what different great groups, radical groups are trying to say and everything. And, 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 and it, it can cause somebody when you're sitting up gorging yourself on the media, it can cause you to lose focus on what the word of God says or how to treat your neighbors, how to treat your brothers and sisters. OK, and so this is just something through observation that that we notice, you know, also the whole COVID-19 numbers, all of a sudden after election time, all of a sudden all these numbers that went up, uh, it's, it's, it's just astronomical numbers. You know why? Because now they're trying to push this vaccine now. Now, I'm not no, you know, person that studies on vaccines or anything. I know there's, I think there's a couple of different type of vaccines. Pfizer's doing one, all these different, you know, places are doing one. People have, have did a, a vaccine trial and have, you know, have had side effects and everything. But my point about the whole COVID thing and the numbers, notice how all the numbers and stuff sparked and, and spiked up after the elections. But during all this protest, when people was not practicing social distancing at all, as if that really does anything, they didn't practice social distancing at all. They was out there rioting and looting. I mean, uh, hand in hand with each other. The numbers weren't spiking then. But all of a sudden, right after the election time, all of a sudden, now, here go all these numbers. I'm going to tell you some people. It is, it is something how you got Mike Tyson and Roy Jones uh, in the ring fighting. Uh, and, and I saw the way in. Okay, I saw when they was weighing in, they had a a, a glass uh, window in front of them so they can get face to face, which is so, it was so foolish because 
that same glass window wasn't there when they was boxing in the ring with each other, sweating on each other, breathing all over on each other. The same thing the media is telling you to practice social distancing and talk about the droplets and all this other stuff. I can't stand hearing that word from some some of these uh, people, these talking heads. But all the droplets and everything, when you go to church and worship, you got to wear your mask now because the droplets are the droplets. But you got two grown men. Matter of fact, there was a boxing match before that one. So you got four grown men in the ring, boxing, sweating, breathing on each other and everything, mouthpiece, spit, flying, all this other stuff. They don't have to practice social distancing. They don't have to wear a mask. You know why? Because of money. Then you got the NFL. How come the NFL hasn't been canceled? You know, you got the NFL where you got 22 grown men on the field at the same time, tackling each other, sweating, hitting each other and all this other stuff for two and a half hours. Even with the outbreak of the so-called coronavirus taking place where they had to postpone games, they had to cancel games, reschedule games. Some of the star athletes got, you know, COVID and all this stuff and tested positive for COVID and stuff. But yet they rescheduled those games and they came back and played again. Even the college football athletes, they got college football going again. So called so so for all these so-called numbers that are getting out of whack and everything, they still got the NFL and they still got college athletes playing football for two and a half hours on TV. You know why? Because of money. So, but yet they want to tell churches and they want to tell normal civilians, you got to wear a mask in the service. And it, it's amazing how churches are following the world. They're following it. The, we, we, we cannot sit up here and talk about, you know, uh, the spirit of fear and everything, but we're going right along with it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, I attended a place that you had to wear a mask for. And, and after a while, it, just, it, it, it bothered me. It really started getting to me. And I'm just like, you know what? No, enough is uh, enough. Is enough. I just can't. I can't do it. So anyway, I, I, I noticed this is that NFL athletes, boxers can get in the ring, fight all this other stuff, all this contact sport, soccer, everything. They ain't got to wear a mask while they doing all this running, interacting, breathing, sweating and all this other stuff. But when you go to Walmart, you got to wear a mask. OK. When you enter, and you're not even going to be in Walmart that long. It may be an hour, whatever. I mean, if you're in Walmart for an hour, the way Walmart is being ran, I mean, my goodness, it's, it's kind of tough being there for an hour. Then they close down the schools despite the educational setback that it's causing for these children. And I and I uh, 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 work, you know, in schools often. And I see this online learning is, 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 is hurting a lot of these kids. It's hurting a lot of these families. But when they, it doesn't matter because when, when the wicked, when the, when the ungodly want to push an agenda, they don't care who, who, who they sacrifice as long as that agenda gets pushed. Because what happens is you keep pressuring people, pressuring people, beating them down, oppressing them, whatever you want to call it, and backing them into the corner until they, until they submit and they yield to this, this whole, uh, uh vaccine thing. And I'm going to deal with that real quick in, 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 in a second. But isn't this something how <clears throat> all the NFL players have been going, I believe they on week 10 or 11, something like that. They get ready to go into the playoffs. All the times that they've had these, you know, NFL athletes with, with COVID and everything, it's, it's somehow they got to they gotta wear a mask on the sidelines, but they got to take the mask off when they get into the game to play. You know, so it's just, it's just, so, it's just so much foolishness. Then at the end of the game, they got to they shake hands with the mask on. But you was just out there tackling this dude, you know, during the whole game for two and a half hours. Why you got to wear the mask now? It, it, it's, it's so much hypocrisy and inconsistency about this thing. But it is it, it, it's something how out of all these so-called, you know, COVID tests and everything that not one NFL athlete has lost their lives. Not one. There are six. There are 1,696 current NFL players, and now one has lost their lives, and all of them have made a full recovery. Now, this is not to downplay people that have lost their lives because of this virus and anything. They have underlying issues, things of that nature. But I just want you to see, and I just want to paint this picture to let you see how the media is pushing fear. They're liars. They're deceivers. 
And the ones that, that are that are orchestrating them and giving them their marching orders, the ones that are in the political arena and government, and everything like that, they're giving them their marching orders to promote this fear. Because everybody else got to comply with these with these so-called uh, 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 mass ordinances and all this stuff, the curfews and everything else. But yeah, NFL players, boxers, and all those that entertain in the sports arena, they don't have to comply with it. Even when their particular arena is, is is getting COVID, they'll just reschedule the games, bring them back out there. The people want to see football, they want to see sports and everything. But everybody else, you got to comply with it. Even when governors are caught, not even following their own rules, and so we see the inconsistency. Now, the next thing I want to bring up is this: uh, this Dr. Fauci, uh, he comes out and now he's giving credit to a black woman for creating or, or for, for spearheading or pioneering a, a vaccine. And he, the reason why he did that is so that black people will not be apprehensive towards a vaccine. And um, people, it, it, it is something how <laughs> whenever they want African-Americans to get on board with something, they put a black face in front of them. They put a black face in front of us. They, Barack Obama put a black face on it. Oh, African Americans just jump wrong. Even in a church, just jump right along with it. Just jumped on board and everything. Despite everything that he did that was going to go against the word of God, even the stuff that we're seeing today with all this perversion, transsexuals, bisexuals, all these different sexuals, everything that's being exalted and pushed now because of what President Barack Obama did, African Americans went right along with it. Even those in the church went right along with it. They put a black face up there. Now they got another one, you know, with with, you know, uh, Kamala Harris, who with one minute she was, you know, Indian. And now, now she's, you know, African, you know, she's she's a black woman now and stuff. And so guess who's going along with it again? All you know, that's what Joe Biden got her in there for is to get them to get African-Americans. Now, now Black Lives Matter, they want to meet with him <laughs> because they gave him their votes. Now they want him to push their agenda. Because now they got a black woman in there. And see, this is the same little thing that people tend to fall for every time. It's just like with this whole, you know, with the, with, with the whole uh, Jim Jones, you know, thing where where he he's strung people along and promising them life and everything. Oh, here you go. But, this, but take this Kool-Aid. This is the same thing what they're doing now. They're using the African-American people in high uh, ranking places to lead African Americans to follow right alongside them, to, to, to just lead them like they lead them to the promised land, but all the way on the way there, hey, don't forget to take this vaccine. Take this vaccine. We're promising you life. Take this vaccine. It's the same thing. The Pied Piper <laughs> led all those little rats out of town. They didn't give him his money. He took all the children, led them away. The children were never seen again. That's just a little little tale that was that was out there. But it, it, the point that I'm making is how people are being strung along by what they see because they identify with someone with their same skin tone. So basically, you're basically being led by your flesh. Ain't being led by your emotions. Oh, we got a black woman in, you know, she's going to be with Biden and stuff like that. So y'all think that everything that just because it's got a black face to it, it must be okay. All right. So anyway, Fossey acknowledges this woman. And it's something because they even, I mean, Fossey ain't seen nobody in 30 years as a, you know, for, for, uh, 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 to, to, to be a patient, you know, he's hasn't practiced, practiced or whatever in, in 30 years and stuff. And so now he's acknowledging, you know, this woman. And this is a, this is a deceptive to lead people away to embrace something because, hey, I acknowledge a black woman. So that means black people, African-American people, you got to trust her because this is one of your own. That's helping pioneer this vaccine. So you got to trust her. Despite all these different projects that have been done, projects that have been done, African-Americans, you know, over the, over the uh, 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 years ago, decades ago and everything, you got to trust her now. I acknowledge her. We're acknowledging black people. See what we're doing? See we see how good we are? Because we're acknowledging this, the uh, black people, black innovators and all this stuff so black people can get on board. But what happened when that black doctor named Stella Emanuel 
along with some white doctors back in, I want to say back in June, how they came out last summer saying that hydrochloroquine worked. What did they do? How did they treat that black doctor? They didn't acknowledge her. They called her a, a, a witch doctor. They called her all kind of names, came against her ministry and all that stuff, interviewed her, pretty much made that lady look like a kook. And there was white doctors with her. Did Dr. Fossey acknowledge her? Absolutely not. You know why? Because it went against the agenda. But the ones that are supporting the vaccine that goes along with this media's fear tactics, oh, they're going to acknowledge her. They're going to exalt her. They're going to exalt her skin color. But you didn't exalt somebody who was from Africa. I mean, that's as black as you can get. You from Africa. And she from Africa and said that this stuff works. She's treated over 300 some patients. Dr. Fossey ain't treated one patient. But this woman treated over 300 some patients and all of them recovered. Not one of them passed away. And even the white doctors was alongside her and saying the exact same thing. But what did the media do? Oh, they completely, they, they shut them up. If you put it on Facebook, you put a video on Facebook, Facebook took it down. Whatever you, you posted it, they took it down. You know why? Because it clashed against their agenda. It clashed against the scare tactics that they were, that the media and these different uh, government officials have been trying to push. All right. And so now this is what we, what we see taking place, people. Is that when the wicked ones' agendas come out, their own agendas expose them? I showed you about the NFL athletes. I showed you about the doctor, Doctor Fossey, how he's exalted one African American uh, woman, but they they demonized the other black woman and the white doctors that came out and spoke against you know uh, uh, using vaccines. They wanted to use hydrochloroquine. If, if I'm saying that, if I'm saying that correctly, and it shows that the recovery rate, the statistics of the recovery rate excuse me, recovery rate is actually exposing the 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 uh, uh the the agenda. They expo it's exposing the agenda because the media always pushes death and cases. They don't talk about they always talk about how many people have been infected. They never tell deal with rarely do they deal with the recovery rate. Now all of a sudden if you have it you can get it again. Is that that's, Don't that sound like the flu? I mean, people have colds. People get flu viruses. You know, they had it one season, they get it again. They have allergies one season, they have allergies again. When I was coming up, we had uh, chicken pox. They said you can only get that once in your life. And chicken pox was no joke. That was, I still got some of the scars on my on my face and around me that uh, from, from chicken pox when I was uh, 10 years old. That was no joke, Okay. And so, it, and, it, and it went away. Voila. Born in the 80s, you know, raised in, during the 80s area. Still here. Praise God. Okay. And so, these are the things people, and sometimes people have their issue with the vaccines and stuff like that. Listen, they had vaccines for mumps, measles, chicken pox, all this other stuff, the flu and everything. Uh, I, I'm, again, I don't know all what's going to be in, these, in this vaccine and stuff, but I just want to bring out the hypocrisy and the inconsistency of how of what is taking place in the fear that is being pushed and it's a it's a sad shame that you when you have churches okay churches conforming to it wearing masks social distancing in churches this is not something that look here people of god jesus christ dealt with lepers he healed 10 lepers at one time told them to go their way Showed themselves to the to the to the officials, and as they went, they were healed. We see what the apostles them deal with. They didn't have all the medicine, all the stuff we got today. They had the raw power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, in, in, in ministries, that's where we need to be definitely, you know, uh, uh, worshiping and stuff in the presence of God. You know, just 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 feels that place because the hearts of people are after Jesus Christ, are uh, hungry for the presence of God, for the manifestation of God. All these healing crusades and stuff we see, and all these deliverances and, and and the testimonies and everything that we're seeing, you know. But but all of a sudden this happens, and because the media is pushing this, now everybody got to wear a mask in the in, in the church. Now everybody got a social distance in the church. Hey, look here, honest, I can understand somebody say, hey, they got these symptoms, they got underlying health factors and stuff. Hey, stay home. 
I mean, if that's what the, the choice you want to make, I mean, stay home and view it online or whatever. But the ones who don't look here, we can't be operating out of fear either. Now, I'm not condemning somebody that feel like they want to stay home. I'm just saying, don't let fear be the driving uh, 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 force to lead you to 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 uh, to make decisions like that. All right. So we got to look at these things, people. Now, again, I'm not condemning somebody that's, that that they want to stay home, whatever. Like, I mean, you, you take that up with the Lord. But I'm saying that the step, the thing I'm, I'm I'm saying is that we shouldn't, as a as a church, be conforming to the fear tactics of the world. They already got you wearing masks in Walmart and Meyer and all these other pl different places and stuff. And you, you, they don't want you going to see your own relatives. And then you got to go to church. Hey, y'all y'all can't shake hands today. Y'all got to go out different exits and everything. Okay. Make sure every five seconds somebody got to leave out the sanctuary or you, you, you get, you got to, uh, uh, practice social distancing. You can't, you, you can't sit with certain people. You can't sit with your own family. You got to be spread apart. As a matter of fact, when you sing in praises, keep your mask on so you can sing to the Lord. Come on. Where, where in the world is this at? What, what happened when they come up with something else and they tell the church they can't do something? You're just going to go along with it? I mean, the people of God, we just got to take a, a take a stand. I mean, my goodness. So anyway, I want to deal with this uh, whole issue with um, Carl Lentz, um, all the stuff that's happened and transpired. Now, he'll saw him and fired him as a pastor and all this other stuff. And, that, and that's something because, you know, I wonder if they still got them homosexuals on the praise team, singing praise and worship. But they go after the man, fire him because of the. Yeah, I guess he had a you know high profile and all this other stuff. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, people. These guys, every single time that seek this celebrity status, they want to be popular. They want to be popular so much in the world, they get overtaken by their own lust and their own desires. This is the thing that is, and this is not to can you know, of course, to you know, condemn. I hope you know he repents. Gets you know and and comes at and comes and become born again to follow Jesus Christ because of some of the things that he taught he was not teaching the Jesus of the Bible the things when I see him say on Oprah Winfrey and all that stuff it, it was not of the Word of God you know so I can't say that he was he was born again or anything like that because what he was saying did not line up with the Word of God but there's a pattern here that you got to see and this is something I've been trying to I, I I've expressed before. With others that have fallen in the same transgression or in the same sin. Now, the only difference between him and some other people is that he has a high profile. So when he messes up, every lights, camera, action is on him. But with people behind the YouTube camera do stuff, you won't ever know about it. Okay? And so this is the reason why, you know, uh, when people are getting on, on social media and YouTube stuff, you got to look at a person's heart. You got to look, you got to discern things by the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to discern things by the Holy Spirit because you don't know what that person's lifestyle is like when they turn that cell phone off, when they turn their, their recording device off and they and they go on about their life. But they when they come on camera, you get the highlight reel. You get the you know, you get all the 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 uh, uh, the glitz and the glamour and everything. They done made themselves up. And I can't stand when people sit up here and they they get ready to do a live uh, uh, recording or a live um, video. And they sitting there prepping themselves. They know the camera's on. They know they being recorded. Oh, uh, y'all come chime in, chime in. But they they drinking their water, drinking their Kool Aid. They 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 prepping their hair and all. Do like take care of that stuff before you get on camera. You know. But anyway, that's my little little soapbox, whatever. But anyway, when these people are uh, 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 trying to be celebrities, hit that celebrity status. They're will you start seeing compromise in their doctrine of what they teach. And one thing that I see common about a lot of these ministers that will highly profile or celebrity ministers, or whatever, they always defend the world. They always defend these Hollywood celebrities. They always defend these Hollywood actors and everything, despite the sins that they're exalting and using as a stumbling block to cause to cause other people to fall to, to fall. And when you speak against those sins, when you speak against what the world is doing. These uh, celebrity pastors and leaders and musicians and stuff, uh, they they come after you and, and attack you. Talking about the church is too hypocritical. Talking about the church is is is, is too much rules and in, in, in everything. That's what Kirk Franklin came out with. No more rules. No more religion. You know, I, I'm losing. No more rules. I'm losing my religion. All this other stuff because of the standard that many people take with the word of God 
and speak the truth with it. Okay? Because the word of God does not change. And so one of the things that I notice with these with these so-called some of these celebrity leaders is that they don't take a stand on sin. They don't speak against sin when they're preaching or teaching or doing their interviews. They never speak against sin. They never challenge people to live holy. It's all about your brokenness. It's all about your breakthrough. It's all about your best life now. It's all about God blessing you in front of your enemies. It's all about material things. It's about material things for you to be looked at a certain way in the world. That's why when they came out with that whole Preachers of L.A. and and, and that show called uh, uh, Preach and all this different things trying to show that ministers can ball out too, that ministers can have wealth, that ministers can prosper and all this other stuff showing everything that had to deal with material possession as if gain equal godliness. And what happened? The shows got taken off the air. The ministers and went off and, and wild out somewhere else and doing all this other stuff. But that's what I, I, you start seeing with these a lot of these uh, 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 some of these leaders that want to be celebrities, want to be exalted by the world, want to shake hands with the world and take pictures with Snoop Dogg and 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 promote these albums and everything. And in one minute they, they they sing in gospel music, next minute they yoking up with some secular rapper. Every time they get to doing this, you're starting to see the lust in their own heart. You're seeing the manifestation of the lustful desires of this world, the lust of the eyes, <clears throat> the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You're seeing that. That's what that is, people. When they're yoking up with the world or they're defending the world, when 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 Tasha Kyle's recorded with Nicki Minaj and Pastor John Gray came out defending Nicki Minaj and everything, see when they, but when these pastors fall and get exposed, the world is nowhere to be found. Where do they come? Right back to the church. Right, they come humble, right back to the church. Some of them do. But I found it interesting that they kicked this man out of the church, you know, pretty much stripping his leadership. But you got some ministers that got caught up in that same thing and still got their position in the church, still leading the ministry. See? So anyway, one of the things that I also noticed is that when it came, you know, to John Gray, Carl Lentz, and others like him, they always got connected to Oprah. They always got connected to Oprah Winfrey. Okay. And we all see, you know, the, the, the Jezebel, you know, spirit in, 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 in her and her doctrine and everything, her belief that she's always promoting her little old network and all this stuff. There's just a mixture. You got Jake's that's a part of the old network. I don't know if he still is, but he was some years ago. Tyler Perry and all of them, you know, all a part of her network. Remember in the book of uh, Revelation chapter two, Thyatira, Jezebel has children that would embrace who she was and embrace her doctrine. And they started doing the exact same thing. That's why many of them don't speak against sin. They ain't going to speak against homosexuality. They ain't going to speak against perversion because they got friends, because they're connected in the, in, the, in, in, in the world so much that you can't speak against what you're in covenant with. That's why when we see things in the word of God, that's why I try to definitely call this, you know, I call this channel, if it's in the word, it's in the word. That's because if it's in the word, you teach it. If it's in the word, you go by it. If it's in the word, you don't just read it and hear it, but you live it and you're doers of it. Okay. And so that's why you, when you see some of these letters or you see Tyler Perry and stuff, and he didn't, I guess he didn't pay almost a hundred some thousand dollars of Carl Lentz, you know, recently to help keep the house or whatever the case may be, but it's always been for show. It's always being shown how much money somebody is given. You know what? Jesus Christ said something to his disciples when they were, when the people were bringing their alms and giving their offers one time and the wealthy ones were seen with how much they were given, how much they was given. They were, they were being seen and Jesus would see it. And he was talking to the disciples. Then the one woman that had the two mites, Jesus said that woman gave more than anybody else that gave, even all the big numbers that they gave with, because she gave her last. She gave truly, sincerely from the heart. See, what we're seeing, people, is that these guys, they will never, they I won't say never, I will say that they don't stand against sin. They don't stand against sin. They don't speak against sin. It's all about 
getting the masses, having a big ministry, having big followers on Twitter, on social media, or having a big ministry and telling people what they want to hear. Just encourage the people. Just, you know, people are already beaten down. Just, you don't need to teach, speak against sin. You don't need to call this stuff out. You don't even take a stance against things uh, like this that's going on in the world and everything. You just need to encourage the people. Just encourage them about the blessings of God. Just encourage them about, about this. See, one thing that Jesus taught about blessings is that blessed are you when men speak of you because of me. Blessed are you that mourn. Blessed are you that will take men, men, men take advantage of you and mistreat you. You are blessed because of my name. He didn't say one time in those beatitudes about material possessions equaling your blessing. Okay. And so, but that's not what's being taught. Everybody wants the, you know, the material. And they look here, God blesses you, you know, your job blesses the work of your hands and stuff and increases you everything. Okay. But that is not the focus. That is not the focus. The focus is us living right, living holy, departing from sin, turning away from evil, turning away from what the world exalts and calls good, evil, excuse me, calls evil good and good evil. As citizens of the kingdom of God, we walk by the Holy Spirit, not by the flesh. These guys that are stumbling in this in this in this sin and committing adultery, cheating on their wives, and doing all this other stuff, multimillionaires, because they never took it, they never took a stand against sin. Because a lot of times people won't take a stand against sin because there's some things that they're doing in their life. Now he's going to therapy and everything. Look here. The therapy that you need is crucifying your flesh. Fasting, repenting, turn back to the Lord, focus on your marriage. Focus on your household. And see, the, the sad part about it is that people look at this, this one person, these ministers that do stuff like this, and they, oh, quit putting your mouth on them. Quit, you know, the church needs to be praying for them and everything. Look, look here. They have the word of God right there in front of them and refuse to obey. How come nobody's concerned about the souls that they cause to stumble? That's one of the things the Lord will be, uh, begin to show me. And deal with me about things in my in my life and in, in uh uh times ago was that when you get involved in stuff like that, you're not only committing sin, but you're causing somebody else to stumble in sin. When you get out there and you slander or you gossip and you do this stuff, or you get involved in sexual morality, you do all this stuff, you not only just committing, but you also causing somebody else to stumble because of what you're doing. Because when you sowing that into their life. They're thinking it's okay because you're supposed to be a representative of the kingdom of God. So they think that's okay for a believer or a child of God to act. That's why in the book of 1 Peter, it tells you to turn away from certain things. Turn away from slander. Turn away, turn away from hypocrisy. Turn away from these things. And then it says, be ye holy for I am holy. And for those, and I believe it's in 1 John, I forgot what chapter it is, but the, those that desire to, I, mean, I think it's, excuse me, the book of James if, if we identify with Christ, we must walk as Jesus Christ did. Now, look here. All of us are work in progress with the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit leading us, convicting us, and dealing with us about certain things. Things that I'm, I'm you know, uh, letting go and, and, and trying to turn around and, and keep from doing and keep from, from uh, reacting a certain way and all this stuff. But there, there's a work in process. Okay? But that does not mean just because... We may, you know, uh, struggle in a certain area, stumble in a certain area. Jesus Christ said, though a righteous man may fall several times, he's not utterly cast out. Just because we may stumble in a certain area, that don't mean the word of God changes. That don't mean the standard of God changes. Holiness is, is the way of the Lord. It don't matter. I don't care how many times you can't skip over this scripture and this verse and everything just because you having a struggle or because you, you fall in a certain area in your life. The word of God don't change. It's going to last forever. And everybody that's going to name the name of Jesus Christ, we got to depart from iniquity. Bottom line. And so when we're seeing this stuff, people, we're seeing people stumbling. That's why the Bible says, excuse me, that's why the Bible says, uh, do not, I will not suffer a novice to teach, lest he be lifted up in pride and fall into the condemnation of the devil fall into the, the same judgment. 
What does the novice do? They say things that don't even line up with the scriptures. That's what some of these leaders are doing because they came out of nowhere. And you got a lot of these uh, new, I don't know, new millennial pastors that are coming up. And all it is is about grace. It's just about, you know, uh, encouragement. Everything is they, they, they don't teach against sin. They don't teach against the, the they don't teach about the effects of sin. They don't teach about generational curses and how evil spirits are, 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 are attacking a person's life because of habitual sin. They won't deal with that. They won't talk about living holy. No, these this new generation of preachers that are coming up, they're more concerned about what the community wants to hear, what they what they what what the people want to hear. They're more concerned about. It seems like a lot of them are more concerned about. Uh, entertainment. You know, you got the coffee. It would be. I went to. I went to one church. They had. They had like almost like kitchen tables in the sanctuary. People just sitting down, just drinking their coffee and everything, just making everything just so so convenient for people. I mean, my goodness, you can just somebody can just fall asleep right there on the couch. But that's the way it is. That's what. That's the way things have been have been uh, uh, shifting in certain ministries is to make things convenient for people. Just make it convenient. Make it just where they can just have popcorn and have coffee and have their donuts and everything. And everybody just sitting around just like they're at the, at, at the local pub or something like that. And just and just let the preacher just teach the little encouraging words about God and everything. Never challenging people to repent. Never challenging people to turn from their sins. Never challenging them because they don't want to offend people. See, when you tell the truth, it's going to offend people. When you speak the word of God, it's going to convict because the Holy Spirit is dealing with that person. But people don't want that. Some like a lot of some of these like newer ministers, they don't want to do that. Even if you look at what's going on with the gospel music industry. I mean, my goodness, you got Lecrae. He getting up here. He's getting uh, him and Kirk Franklin did a song, I guess. And he's getting a, a, the uh, Christian nominated for the Christian Contemporary Award or whatever. But the guy said he don't want to be identified as a Christian artist. So why are you giving him a Christian reward? See, this is the, the, the kind of stuff that is taking place. You don't want to be identified as a Christian artist, but you steady receiving Christian accolades, accolades from, from Christian networks and organizations. That's that's ridiculous. That's 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 the double standard if, I, if, if you ever seen anything. So I find it very interesting, people how uh, these guys will sit up here. And I, I remember when, when President Trump was doing his um, his debate. I said this message was going to be about President Trump, but this is just, I want to make this point. And that is, during the debates, he, they, they constantly challenge him. How come you haven't, white, you haven't renounced white supremacy? How come you haven't renounced this group? You haven't renounced that group? And people, even in the church, are like, yeah, he never renounced this. He never renounced this, which he did. But anyway, he never renounced this. He never denounced this group. He never denounced. But yet you got these people in ministry, these leaders, these musicians that never denounced their affiliation with a Greek letter organization, never denounced their support of same-sex marriages of the LGBT, never denounced their support for Planned Parenthood, never denounced their support for a candidate or, or somebody of the Democratic Party that says it's okay for an eight-year-old to have a sex change. How come the how come the, how come people ain't being held to the same standard in church, but yet you want to hold the president to this standard? to openly denounce something, when well, you got people in ministry and in leadership that ain't denounced nothing. When did the Tyler Perry come out and denounce his support for the LGBT? When did, when did, when did any of these, you know, some of these uh, celebrity people to ever denounce the fact that they had, you know, uh, Hollywood celebrities at, uh, uh, on a church platform at Megafest? They ever denounce it? Absolutely not. But you want this man, you want to find a reason to point the finger at this man when you got people doing in, in, in certain ministries doing the exact same thing. Never denouncing them, but they still get a platform. All right. So when we see stuff like this, there was a there was a uh, I saw a, a commercial for a show on Netflix uh, called uh, Voices of Fire. And 
I saw that guy, Pharrell Williams, I guess. And I remember when uh, Kimberell did her thing and Pharrell went on. Moment, what, did he, what did he do? Went right to Ellen DeGeneres and went on there, you know, supporting, you know, the gays and all this other stuff. And Ella did. That's why they go on Ella G G uh, DeGeneres anyway, because they go on that show because they're in agreement with her. So anyway, his uncle, I guess, is the pastor of this church. And he's trying to put together a diversified choir. And all these singing voices come in inside the church. They're auditioning inside the church. And see, again, because you are connected to a celebrity, you get the lights, camera, and action. Has Pharrell ever came out and said he was born again? He was saved? Has he ever came out and said he denounces that, that secular music industry? Has he ever came out and said he denounces this, his support and, and, and uh, protecting of you know, LGBT? Absolutely not. But yet, that's the point that I'm making. But yet, anyway, on this thing, and it needs to be called Strange Fire, and not Voices of Fire, but Strange Fire, because this pastor wants to put together a diversified group of people so they can sing in a choir. Let me tell you something, people. You can't do anything in the church if you ain't born again, if you ain't living right, if you ain't trying to walk with Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior, you have not been born again by the Holy Spirit, you have not shown the fruits of the Spirit, you don't, you can't be in any choir, any praise team, any praise dance team, whatever. You can't even hit the tambourine in the church because you ain't born again. You don't belong to the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says, Jesus Christ says, let the wheat and tear grow up together. And then when harvest time comes, the angels are going to go and grab the tares, bind them up and throw them into the fire. So if you got people that are tares in your ministry, meaning they are not born again by the Holy Spirit and are on their way to hell, how in the world are you going to put them in a choir stand to sing unto God? That's strange fire, people. That is strange fire. But because of an ability that they have to sing, you will allow them to stand up and give them a platform in the church, in your choir, Give them a platform and sing before the masses and the masses think that that's okay. That's how so many people got deceived by Kanye West because of his ability, because of what he did out there in the world. Okay, and I'm telling you, get that truth behind hip-hop hip -hop uh, part 13 because him and his wife was going to a party of a well-known witch in Hollywood recently, within like the last you know couple, uh, two months or whatever. So anyway, people, you see this stuff happening where there's no standard. And that's why that doctrine of no rules, no religion. What that means is that you can't tell me, you can't, you can't, you can't speak the truth. You can't tell me about sin and everything. And I should just be able to do whatever I want to do. No accountability. No accountability. But we, when the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked with non-believers, I don't want to hear that. No rules, no religion, no rules. See, in the kingdom, there is rules. In the kingdom, to be a citizen of a kingdom, you have to walk a certain way. You have to live a certain way. You have to honor the king. And one way we honor Jesus Christ and, with the, and the Father God is through our lifestyle. That's why it says sanctify Christ in your heart. Okay? That's why it says we're to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That's why it tells us to crucify our flesh and walk in the spirit. Therefore, we won't fulfill the lustful desires of our flesh. So in the kingdom of God, there is rules. You can't run around cheating on your wife. You can't commit adultery. You can't get involved in the sexual morality. You can't be out here cussing and swearing and, and cursing men and all this other stuff. There are rules in the kingdom of God. All right. And so that doctrine being promoted and being pushed. And you got these Christian artists now, these, this, this new generation of Christian artists. And, and, and this brings me to the point because I, I think I'm going to show a, a, a clip of his video. But uh, this young man is on there. Hair dyed all green and pink and all this other stuff. He's always covering one of his eyes and everything. You know, that's that whole Illuminati stuff and uh, uh, um, uh, 
everything that the, that's what the world does and stuff with these secular artists doing the world. But this guy, he's on there doing uh, Kundalini yoga, you know, uh, stances in the video. But then when you when you look at his 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 Twitter statement, he talks about how how uh, Jesus Christ came and stuff to to show us how to live, to how to honor God and this and this and that. And all of a sudden, he says something about Mother God. Father, mother, God teaches us this. See, these guys, and the point that I want to make, because I know I kind of chopped it up a little bit, and I may, if I can find the pictures, I may show them here on show them here on this video. But the point I want to make is this: is that these these artists, a lot of them, they know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came and died on the cross for our sins. They know Jesus that way. What they don't know is the work of the Holy Spirit. In other words, they don't know the counsel of God. They don't know the word of God. And so they think that all they got to do is believe on believe in who Jesus Christ is and what and, and what the Bible says Jesus Christ is, but they don't have to live by the Holy Spirit. They don't have to live what the Bible says live. So when they, when you see scriptures, when they see scriptures about love, not the world, if any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. They don't, they ignore those scriptures. When it talks about, you know, in the Bible, when you cannot mix and mingle uh, uh, other religions into, into Christianity or, or, or the, the followers of God cannot get involved in uh, 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 idol worship. And then try to serve God at the same time because they don't hear that. They, they're not taught that either. They, they're not, I won't say they're not taught that, but they don't go into the word of God about that. And so they're out here just doing things, saying Jesus, God, but they don't know the work of the Holy Spirit. They don't know what the word of God says, how they should depart from those things. That's why the Bible is very clear. Do not be deceived. Homosexuals, adulterers, murderers, liars, idolaters will have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. So it shows you right there that you cannot claim Christ and be a part of that lifestyle, practice those things and saying that you, 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 you're exalting Jesus Christ in your music videos. When at the same time you exalt in Hinduism and Buddhism, you exalt in the world. You on the, on, on, on your so-called Christian video, sounding like, looking like, and acting just like the secular rap artists, just like the secular musicians. You're doing the exact same thing. That's why the Bible says, "Come out from amongst them and be separate." What fellowship does a believer have with a non-believer? What exchange do you have? What fellowship does Christ have with Belial? What exchange? That's what that word fellowship. What exchange do you have? None. So you have to be separated. And that's why these artists that are coming up, these musicians, a lot of them are coming up. They're not denouncing the hip hop music industry, the secular R&B music industry. You know why? They're still connected to it because it's about their album sales. It's about their fans that they want following them on Twitter. It's about them and selfish ambition. That's what it's about. They know how to say the Christian lingo. They know how to say the things that Christians identify with, with their ears, but their actions and their doctrine and their, what they truly believe go against the word of God. And that's why what's happening is that people are getting platforms too quick People are getting platforms way too quick and they're stumbling and falling and they're leading. They're, they're causing casualties that just follow them souls that are that are that are that are not, you know, on the milk, not even on the milk of the word of God. But they're looking for answers. And these people that got these platforms so fast being exalted so fast by the world and then the church stumble and fall and they lead these souls away with them. And that's where the, that's where why we see the problem, people. Is this is not just about Carl Lentz and and what John Gray did in the past? Look at the victims that have fell with them, that they cause a stumble and fall. Look at the things that you and I have done when we've committed sins in front of people, 
and done things. And, and, and we think it just impacted us. Well, we repented. We had the knowledge to repent. The Holy Spirit convicted us to repent. But what about the ones that saw us that stumbled and fell as well? Because they saw us do it. See, uh, and, I, and I work with young people. A lot of times young people, they do things because they see their parents doing. My parents did this. That's why I do it. Because what the parents do, the young crowd, the young children see that and they model the same thing. And so we as people, as citizens of the kingdom of God, when we do these things, we cause other people to stumble and fall as well that may not even know better. But we can become a stumbling block to them. We can lead, we, or excuse me, I won't say, we can, we can put stumbling blocks in front of them. All right. And so that's why I, I deal with this whole thing. And, you know, just the double standard that we see happening. You know, these these people out here that are always, you know, they want to point the finger at everybody else. Well, and he didn't denounce this, but yet you a follower of Christ. Have you denounced Black Lives Matter? Have you denounced your support for that? It's our, it's, it seems like there's a, just a double standard out here. And a, the Bible says a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Don't let that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. You can't sit up here and point the finger at somebody when you are doing the exact same thing yourself. OK, and so I uh, just want to kind of uh, share that people, because when we're saying these things, you know, of course, a lot of things are coming out. A lot of things are, are taking place. People are getting caught up in stuff. And and the desire is, look, repent, humble yourself and repent and come to Jesus Christ. Repent to the Lord and allow the Lord to heal you and cleanse you. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things. We may have done, I may have done some stuff before this video. And, you know, I go to the Lord and repent and confess my sins. I'm not perfect. You know, and uh, of course, people on here agree that, that this watching it are not perfect either. But one thing we do not do and we cannot allow is to condone our sin. We cannot uh, we cannot co-sign for our sin. We cannot cover our sin because God sees everything. All right. And so it, it, it's something that these things, these these leaders are falling. Hopefully they repent and turn away from it. They Hopefully their marriages get restored and all this other stuff. But this celebrity status that people have been seeking, you know, trying to be exalted and stuff like that, trying to go on these secular TV shows and programs and everything, and pretty much watering down the word of God because they want to be connected to these uh, celebrity, you know, talk show hosts or these, or get on these, you know, TV cameras and everything and, and want to be promoted on the Huffington Post and all this stuff to be on Time Magazine. When need, when people do stuff like that, pay attention, people of God. When people who are in Christendom or identified in the church or whatever are doing things like that, it won't be long before they fall. It won't be long because what you're seeing manifest. Please hear me. What you're seeing manifest is selfish ambitions and they're willing to use the saints in order for them to become successful and popular. They will use the name of Jesus because that way they have access to the Christian, to the, to the, to the churches because they can say the name of Jesus or God, or it can say something. And all of a sudden people just put their guards down, ignore anything else that they, that they've done with their actions Oh, they said the name of Jesus. That's how Farrakhan got in churches because he said the name of Jesus Christ because he said Jesus Christ came to this earth to teach us about this, this and that and churches just open up to Louis Farrakhan. Never mind what he really believes. Never mind his doctrine. That's the same thing we see with a lot of these celebrity pastors. People are ignoring the doctrine. They're looking at their celebrity status and who they're connected with, who they're in cahoots with, and they're not even paying attention to the doctrine that they're speaking. They're not even paying attention to the messages that they're speaking and how they never speak against sin, how they never challenge people to repent of their sins, how they never call people to turn away from sexual morality, turn away from perversion, turn away from lying, everything, turn away from this false God worship, from your secret uh, letter organizations, all this other stuff. They never tell people to turn away from stuff like that. 
because in some way, shape, or form, they got some kind of connection to that as well. And when you see these people, because you're going to see more like them in 2021, you're going to see more of these, this, these new, you know, some of these new ministers that are coming out. They don't come out. They don't speak out against the things that's going on in the, that's, that's going on in the country. They don't, I mean, what I mean by that, the sins that's being exalted in the culture. The sins of being exalted in the nation, the sins of being exalted in, in people's lives. They'll never, they they really will even, they will, they probably won't ever speak out against the, the perversion of the music and of the movies and everything. They all you're gonna hear is, God, this is your time. They thought you weren't gonna be nothing. This is your breakthrough. Is anybody out there that know that you went through all this stuff in 2020? And 2020 was this and, and everything, but now 2021 is you are the one, and God is gonna do this in your life now. You're gonna break out and break through. The church is gonna prosper. All of that stuff. That's what they're gonna come out saying. People of God. The word of God says this is our reasonable service. Abstain from fornication. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. We got to turn away from sin, turn away from small foxes. We got to do look at our own lives and look at our own hearts and everything and turn away and ask the Lord just to examine us and let his word just work in us and work in our hearts and everything. We turn from those things. Okay. And we cannot fight against the truth when the Holy Spirit is dealing with us, when the word of God convicts us, when we're reading everything. Yes, God, that, that's it. I, I am struggling with this. I need your help. I need grace by your spirit to help me to turn away from this thing. He already knows it anyway. You got to present it before the Lord. Be an open book before the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord. Remember, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. God bless you and love you in Jesus. Okay, people of God, real quick, just wanted, I was just pondering some things, even in regards to the video uh, and this whole coronavirus thing, this, these numbers and everything, and they're telling the churches to practice social distancing in the church, and some ministries are having their, their members wearing masks in the church. Now, what happens when the media and these so-called scientists, Dr. Fauci and all of them, or your local uh, health department specialists, come out and start saying that the coronavirus can be in the water that we have in our city, that it can, it's contaminated the water. If they come out and start saying that, because they've already said the droplets from your mouth is, is, is contaminated, can be contaminated, can spread the virus and everything. So what if the virus has spread through the waters already? Does that mean that the church now is going to stop baptizing people that give their hearts to Jesus Christ, even though the word of God uh, tells us to, to to be to be baptized. See, this thing is not. If the wicked continue to push it, and the church just continue to goes along with it, it will stop every single function of the church of your local church assembly. It will stop it. So, people, this is the reason why I say you just cannot just go along with whatever the media is saying, whatever these so called professionals, scientists, professionals see. They put their trust in man. Scientists and these ones that are pushing this agenda, that's, a, that's pushing this stuff, their confidence is in man, is in mankind, not in God, not in repenting, not in turning to Jesus Christ, not in telling the public to call on the name of Jesus Christ. No, because of their pride, they want to continue to try to put their confidence in man and push their agenda. And as a church, body of Christ, we cannot follow that. All right. So anyway, I wanted to share the other part of the video. I may mention of a of how Christian artists are coming out. These new Christian artists, new Christian ministers are coming out and they're mingling a lot of other false religious practices in their music, in their practice, in, the, in their ministries. We've seen, you know, Potter's House had yoga in their ministry a, a few years back and stuff. And there's others that are doing some of the same thing. But I want, I'm going to show you a video clip by a man named uh, Brother Spencer Smith. He's a, a Baptist minister. Brother Spencer Smith. This is his video. He's going to show you what these new artists that are coming out are, are doing. And this new group is called Ecclesia. <clears throat> and again, as I said before, 
See, people will say they believe in Jesus Christ. They believe that he rose from the dead, he died on a cross, and they'll stop right there. They don't follow the rest of the word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, the doctrines that the apostle laid down. They don't follow that. They want God the way they want it, even though they believe in Jesus Christ to an extent. They don't yield to the Holy Spirit or to the counsel of the word of God. And as a result, they get off and they mix and mingle things in their so-called Christian music, which is not Christian. It's contaminated with false God worship. But I'm going to let you see the video because this is what a lot of artists, even within like the last 10, 15 years, have been doing. They want the world and they want the Bible at the same time, and they mix and bling it, bling it, bling, excuse me, blend it together. It's called syncretism. Syncretism. And this is one thing that God forbids because when you try to mix other religious practices in with Christ, you don't have Christ. As a matter of fact, it shows that you don't know Christ when you do such things. But check out the uh, the video because I may mention of it earlier, but now I found the video and listened to our brother Spencer Smith. Oh, because doctrine's gone, something's filled the void now in Christian music and in Christian churches. And you see guys like this. This is a group called Ecclesia and uh, very young people. And this is their Instagram account. And I'm not going to show you this account, everything that's on it, because there actually is nudity on here, which I find to be appalling. But I want to show you some of the posts that he has made. Uh, this guy, if you see, he's he's got pictures of him with the all-seeing eye on his forehead, which you, we've dealt with that in Third Adam. And uh, this is a Christian artist today. This is a guy who claims to be a, a Christian and is making Christian music and, you know, rising into popularity. Also, he's doing things like this, uh, which is a Hindu dance and just bizarre stuff. And at the same time, he's using Christian jargon and talking about his faith in Christ and love for the Lord the whole time. Uh, here is one that he has done. And, and this is just, this is really weird. He's got that contact lens in. And uh, this is what he said. He said, Yeshua embodies this so perfectly as an example for us. We can so easily fall into the way of lawlessness, yeast of Herod, or the way of legalism, yeast of the Pharisees. Uh, both are antichrist. The narrow way is the way of spirit and truth, the way of endless freedom and sacrificial love. In this path, you learn that all things are pure to those that are pure. In this path, you learn that, th that love is the best way. In this path, you tr many try to catch you and heap labels upon you, but you are free in the flow, caught up in the wind. The wind blows wherever it pleases. They hear it sound, but they cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now that, to the untrained eye, that sounds okay, but really what that is, is I'm just going to be what I am and believe whatever I want to believe, and I'm not going to let anybody pin me down on any label. And that, basically, this is the language of people who have said that doctrine does not matter. And thus, God becomes subjective, and monstrosities like this show up. Now, let me show you this right here. This is another picture of him and uh, with that just grotesque contact lens in. But this is what he said. He explains the contact lens and what he's doing here. And he says this. He said, The orange and blue eye is a symbol of heavenly vision, perfect balance of spirit and truth. Only with the eyes of Christ can we begin to participate in the redemptive work of the gospel, calling out the gold and light where most people People don't have the prophetic sight to see it. This is what Father, Mother, God does for us, and we get to co-labor in this work with our families, institutions, and with the earth. What? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Followers of Christ were never meant to be closed-minded religious fundamentalists. Where did you get that from, sir? This is the language of a man who has thrown doctrine to the wind and just believes that God is whoever he wants him to be. I mean, that's just how it is. Now, let me show you just for a moment some of this new video that they have put out, and it's called Narrow Way. And I, I want you to see if you catch anything as we watch this together and uh, and see what what is actually going on in this music video. There, there is a ton of things, if you're up to speed on some of this stuff, uh, that we'll see here. And I wanted to show it to you real fast. Let's check this out together. And... Um, 
Now, it's obvious to me that these people have some musical talent, and, and that's all good and well. Uh, but just watch and see if, if you can catch any symbolism or anything just strange in the things that they're doing. And uh, some of the, I mean, the, the lyrics are incoherent. It's just basically peppered with uh, Christian cliches. But you notice he's got the contact lens in, and they're all doing these dance routines and whatever. Um, this video has got, uh, I think, about... 12 to 15,000 views on YouTube and uh, overwhelmingly popular with a lot of, with a certain group of young people. Now, this isn't some viral hit, you know, thing, uh, but this is something that uh, it just, it's just weird. It just is weird what they're doing. But I went ahead and broke it down for you guys, some of the things that I saw here in this video. I saw a lot of occult symbolism, and let me show you this as we, as we get into uh, what they actually did. Now, if you notice on this, on this coat there he's got the all-seeing eye all in there uh, there's a phoenix actually on his left side as well all of this is masonic occult symbolism that he's just blatantly putting on his coat and there you go you can see the phoenix you can see the stars you can see uh you can see all that there uh, guys that is that is just weird i mean like the the pope isn't that blatant with his symbolism. Uh, you can see the moon uh, here on the left side. You can see the, the sun. Uh, this, this is paganism. Uh, also, I want you to show that there, there's actually several Hindu-type dances that are being done in this music video. And if you'll notice the, the three-person choreography and uh, how that they're standing behind each other, putting their arms out like this, uh, this, this is a Hindu um, dance and this is there, there's several different ways that they do this but this uh, there's the dance of Kali uh, which is her death dance and then there's also the destruction dance of Shiva and uh, things like of that nature uh, but when you see things like that just note this is not Bible Christianity at all this is this is new age stuff and I want to go back to his um, to what he's saying here on his Instagram post uh, he said this is what Father God wants for us. This is what the Father God does for us when we get to co-labor in this work with our families, institutions, and with the earth. Guys, I want you to know that God is our Father. God is not our mother. Anytime somebody talks about our father, mother, or some, uh, some genderless deity, they are speaking the language of paganism. They are speaking doctrines of devils. That's exactly what this guy says right here. This is what Father, Mother, uh, uh, let's see here. This is what Father, Mother, God does for us when we get to co-labor in this work with our families, institutions, and with the earth. Followers of, notice this, followers of Christ were never meant to be closed-minded religious fundamentalists. That is dangerous talk. There's some things out there that can't be subjective. I want to tell you, when it comes to Bible doctrine and when it comes to who God is, we have to be specific about this because if we if we just say, well, let's just, you know, let's just guess at it and hope for the best and just throw this Bible to the side, uh, you're, you're rolling the dice in your own soul. And so guys, with this video right here, with this this young man, this, this singing group, guys, this is dangerous, dangerous stuff they're playing with. And you parents that are out there, I want to encourage you, Christian music is not what it used to be. Christian music is dangerous. Christian music is is being infiltrated by New Age mysticism, by Hinduism, and by Buddhists pretending to be Christians. This is dangerous stuff. This is stuff that you need to get your family as far away from as you possibly can. Guys, I, I'm just, I'm burdened today because there are a lot of people out there that are misrepresenting God in such a wild, insane way. And it scares me to death. I don't want my family in a church like that. I certainly don't want your family in a church like this. And so use our website, independentbaptist.church, independentbaptist.church, and uh, you can help. Uh, you can get your family into a good, solid church right there and uh, check that out. Also, stick with us here on this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. 